yesterday we were discussing about the molecular simple molecular compounds and complex macromolecular covalent compounds as i told you the simple molecular compounds are simple molecules like nh3 hcl h2 cl2 these are called as simple covalent molecules simple covalent compounds as you can see here s a this is also considered as a simple molecular compound this is i2 simple covalent compounds are attached to each other by weak van der waal forces these weak van der waal forces need very less energy to be break because these are very weak as compared to the original main covalent bond these bondings which are represented as a proper line are covalent bonding but here if i am representing the weak van der waal force so then i will represent it with the dots weak van der waal forces are represented as a dotted line so in all these molecules there are weak van der waal forces this weak van der waal forces are easy to break that's why simple molecular compounds or simple covalent compounds having low melting points and boiling points instead of this macromolecular compounds as i gave you the example of three macromolecular Uh, macromolecular compounds macromolecular covalent compounds silver silicon dioxide silicon dioxide the formula is sio2 diamond and graphite these three examples of macromolecular covalent compounds the structure of silicon dioxide the one silicon atom is attached with four oxygen atoms in the same manner another silicon atom will attach with four other oxygen atoms in this way lattice structure is formed lattice structure as we studied in ionic compound the compact lattices are formed in a same way when there is a compact structure of macromolecular covalent compounds they make a lattice structure where there is a regular arrangement in a compact way next we having example of diamond here you can see the one atom of carbon is attached with four atoms of other carbons here you can see this carbon atom is attached with the four other carbon atoms and this carbon atom again attached with four other carbon atoms let abdul rahman in ionic compound the lattice structure is a complex structure in which opposite ions are attached in a three dimensional way like this if i draw the ionic lattice this ionic lattice look like this three dimensional structure in this di three dimensional structure first positive ion attached then negative ion attached then positive ion attached then negative ion attached in a same way all the corners are arranged as positive and a negative ions and this is just a one unit cube this type of many units are attached together and make a lattice in three dimensional the one unit attached here another attached here some units attached at the back side so make a complex lattice in which opposite ions are attached in covalent compounds one carbon atom is attached with four other carbon atoms this carbon atom is attached with four other carbon atom so in this way the complex macromolecular covalent compounds are form and they are making a lattice structure these are considered as a lattices this is an example of diamond if in exam the examiner asks you to draw the structure of diamond so you 
must know how to draw it one carbon atom attached with four other carbon atom and again the other carbon atom will attach with four new carbon atoms in a same way all the atoms are attached with four other carbon atoms in a grave in a diamond diamond is basically a carbon next we having example of graphite graphite is also a carbon here you can see the structure of graphite one carbon atom another carbon atom another carbon atom the carbon atoms are attached in this way they are making a layer then there is a gap this gap having a electrons here freely moving electrons here freely moving electrons next again here you can see the layer of carbon those are attached in this hexagonal manner again there are some space left that space contains electron abdul rahman the structure i have drawn in which i didn't attach the this carbon with four carbons you have to draw four other carbons like this so don't worry you can say the many of the carbon if i draw like this and it because of the space of the page because of the uh, limitation to draw the structure that's why it look like this but all the carbon atoms are attached with four other carbon atoms so in a structure of graphite first the layer of the carbon atom then there is a little bit space that space contain electrons then again the layer of carbon atoms then space between the sp next layer that space contains freely moving electrons as we know they do not conduct electricity but graphite is a non metal which conducts electricity as we know non metals do not conduct electricity we study this from a junior classes the non metals do not conduct electricity but graphite is that non metal which conduct electricity because of these free electrons which are present in the layer of the carbon atoms in a graphite that's why graphite conduct electricity diamond do not conduct electricity sand do not conduct electricity ammonia do not conduct electricity and many other molecules covalent compounds do not conduct electricity because of their non metal nature metallic nature but graphite conduct electricity because of freely moving electron between the layers of the carbon we are just going to discuss some properties of covalent compounds i have differentiated or separated the covalent compounds into simple and in a macro molecules if i am talking about simple covalent compounds then simple covalent compound formed by the sharing of electron and macro molecular compounds are also formed by the sharing of electron both are formed by the sharing of electrons simple covalent compounds are mostly gases and liquids mostly gases or liquids liquids but larger some senses macro molecular covalent compounds are solids because of their regular lattice structure that's why they are solid so covalent compounds if they are simple molecular covalent compounds then they are gases or liquids and if they are larger macro molecular compounds then they are solids next simple molecular compounds having low melting points and boiling points because they are solids and liquids as we know solids and liquid having low melting and boiling point as compared to solids so because the molecules the simple molecular compounds are attached with 
eat other by weak van der Waal forces. And as I told you, weak van der Waal forces are very weak. So if you want to break this bonding, this intermolecular force, you you need less amount of energy to break this bond. So you need. So that's why simple molecular compounds, simple covalent compounds, having low melting and boiling point because of these. weak intermolecular forces between their molecules so you can easily make them vibrate and break their bonds and make them melt or make them boil by very less amount of energy instead of complex macromolecular covalent compound larger substances they are solid because of their lattice structure their joint structures they having high melting point and boiling point because of their solid nature because of their giant structures you need very high amount of energy to make them vibrate to make their molecules separate because there is not a weak van der waal forces between them all the atoms having a strong bonding all the atoms having a covalent strong bonding because these all bondings are attached in the form of lattice structure that's why they having a very high melting and boiling point if we talk about the solubility then simple covalent compounds are insoluble in water and macromolecular covalent compounds are also insoluble in water both are insoluble in water because for the solubility compound must having some ionic nature having some ions then they when they dissolve in water to be divided into their ions but covalent compounds do not having a ionic nature do not contain charges that's why they are not soluble in water next conductivity if in exams the question is about write the properties of a covalent compound so you must know some properties in that property you must uh, uh, write about the conductivity Uh, if there are ions if there are free, freely moving electrons then the conduction of electricity takes place but as we know there is no ionic nature in covalent compounds there is no free electrons in covalent compounds that's why there is no conductivity for electricity except graphite graphite having a freely moving electron between the layer of the carbons that's why graphite that is present in your pencil conduct electricity except that no covalent compound conduct electricity because covalent compounds do not having ions do not contains electrons next how we can write the formula of covalent compounds how we can name the covalent compounds जी अब्दुल रहमान बहुत कंपाउंड 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 सिंपलर एंड एंड लार्जर कोवेलेंट कोवेलेंट यस दे बोथ बोथ आर आर सिंपल मैक्रो मोलिक्यूलर कोवेलेंट कंपाउंड simple covalent compounds are just small small molecules like oxygen gas carbon dioxide water molecules these are simple covalent compounds but there are complex macro molecular covalent compounds the giant covalent compounds bigger in size like diamond graphite they are not a simple covalent compound they having a very giant structures so we have just divided them into a simple covalent compounds and macro molecular compounds as we know covalent compounds having three types single covalent com com covalent compound double covalent compounds and triple covalent compounds having triple covalent bonding now we are discussing about how to name the covalent compounds it's very important to call the molecules with their proper names so how we can give the name to the covalent compound as we know covalent compounds are formed by the no, Uh, sharing of electron between two non metals or more than two non metals there are some rules 
you have to learn these rules and by keeping these rules in your mind you have to name the covalent compound so look at here first rule for the first element start with the element name for example if i am writing here h c l as the first rule is for the first element start with the element name so what is the name for h it is hydrogen so you have to write it as hydrogen second rule for the second element start with uh, with id name you have to use the id name so this is a chlorine atom as the second rule written you have to use id so it will be chloride not chlorine for first element you have to call with the name like hydrogen not hydro hydride not hydride it's hydrogen but for second element it's a chlorine but you have to use id so chloride this compound this covalent compound having a name hydrogen chloride there are some prefixes if there are many atoms in this example you can see both having just one atom if there are more than one atom so you have to use some prefixes prefix prefix means before name before name you have to add something so look at here what we have to add before name these are some prefixes for one atom we use mono for two atoms we use di for three atoms we use tri for fourth atom is tetra for five atoms penta hexa for seven hepta for eight it's octa for nine it's nona and for 10 it's deca i here some i name endings are written for fluorine it's fluoride for chlorine it's chloride for bromine it's bromide for iodine it's iodide for oxygen it's oxide for nitrogen it's nitride for phosphorus it's phosphide for sulfur it's sulfide so you must learn these id ending if the fluorine is written so how you can end it with the id so it's fluoride clear and these are some prefixes so you have to learn it for one it's mono di tri tetra penta hexa hepta octa nona deca let's start some example here is the first example n2o3 what is its name the question is what is its name i as i said the said you about the rule number 1 name it as the element it's nitrogen clear and the second element is oxygen so id ending id ending for oxygen is id for oxygen is oxide ox side okay but the third rule was if there are more than one atom so you have to use some prefixes here you can see how many atoms for nitrogen two so you have to use here di nitrogen di nitrogen then how many atoms for oxygen 3 so you have to use tri for 3 the prefix is tri so you have to write tri oxide so the name of this compound is the name for this covalent compound is di nitrogen tri oxide clear next example here you can see the another example p4s10 it's a phosphorus it's a sulfur so first element uh, written as a simple element's name phosphorus and sulfur is for sulfide as i told you for second element you have to use id so sulfide you can see here four atoms for phosphorus 10 atoms for sulfur so for four the prefix is tetra so i have written here tetra phosphorus and for 10 the prefix is deca so tetra phosphorus deca sulfide this covalent compound having this name another use do not use mono on the first element remember this do not if the first element is just one atom 
So no need to write mono with the first atom. Here you can see carbon, uh, the chlorine will be four. The missing is four. Okay, so for with the first atom, no need to use a prefix if it's one. So no need to use here mono. It's wrong. Okay. If the first element, if the first atom is single atom, then no need to use mono. So name it as carbon. Four atoms of chlorine. So carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride is the name. Next here you can see first atom of phosphorus. So no need to use mono. It's phosphorus pentachloride. Five having a prefix that is penta. So pentachloride. Next. Another use. If you have OA or OO, then turn it into O. What does it mean? For, look at here. Cl2O3, which is dichlorine heptaoxide. Dichlorine, di for two chlorine atoms. It's a prefix. Dichlorine for seven prefixes. Hepta, hepta oxide. Here you can see O and A written side by side. O and A. And in a rule, it is written as if O and A or O O written side by side, then you have to change it into O. So you have to write it name like this: dichlorine hept oxide. Hepta, not hepta. It's hept oxide. Dichlorine hept oxide. Clear? See another example. P4O6. This is tetraphosphorus. For four, the prefix is tetra. So tetraphosphorus hexa oxide. For six, prefix is hexa. Hexa oxide. See here, O and A written side by side. O is written side by side. So. You change this O and A just written as O. So it is hex oxide, tetraphosphorus hex oxide. Here you can see another example. That is about carbon monoxide. First atom is just one, so no need to write mono. You have to write carbon directly. Carbon. Second atom is one, so you have to use the prefix. Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. So O and A, O and O. Here is the O and O, not O and A. O and O are written side by side, so you have to omit one O. Just write single O, monoxide, carbon monoxide. 